Hello, my name is Professor Andreas Wallenberg and I'm a Professor of Dermatology and Allergy in the Department of Dermatology and Allergy of Ludwig Maximilian University, Munich. Today, I want to guide you through the results of the EXTRA 1 and 2 trials, efficacy and safety of tralecunumab monotherapy in adults with moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. Tralecunumab specifically targets IL-13, a key driver of atopic dermatitis signs and symptoms. The IL-13 will bind to the tralocinumab, thereby preventing receptor interaction and subsequent downstream signaling. The extra 1 and 2 studies were identical, global, double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled, 52-week trials of tralocinumab monotherapy in over 1,500 patients with moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. The trials had a washout period, a randomized initial treatment, and then a maintenance, safety, follow-up, and open-label treatment. So the purpose of this extension was to assess if patients who would have achieved the primary endpoints, which is IgA01 or EZ75, if they would maintain their response with continued dosing, less frequent dosing, or the treatment being stopped completely. At week 16, more patients who received tralocinumab achieved an IgA score of 0 to 1 versus placebo. If we would look at the criteria surrounding the rescue medication, a single use of TCS was registered as a treatment failure following the primary analysis approach. But following an alternative analysis, irrespective of rescue medication use, the response rates would improve for all treatment arms in both studies. Improvement in itch and sleep is of importance to patients. So the improvement in pruritus and eczema-related sleep interference numerical rating scale were seen with tralocinumab versus placebo in both studies. And as you can see here from the graphs from EXTRA2, a separation between tralocinumab and placebo was observed as early as week one. And separation between tralocinumab and placebo was observed from week two onwards. Of the patients who achieved IgA 0 or 1 and EZ75 with tralocinumab every second week at week 16, more than 50% maintained the response through to week 52 with tralocinumab every second week without any rescue medications. Patients that were responders in this analysis had not used any TCS during the entire 52-week study period. Up to 40 or 50% of the responders that were assigned to an every fourth week dosing regimen at 16 weeks maintained response at week 52. Unexpectedly, a proportion of tralocinumab responders at week 16 that were re-randomized to placebo retained response over 36 weeks without any active maintenance treatment or TCS. Tralocinumab was well tolerated with an overall frequency and severity of adverse events comparable to placebo. Almost all cases of conjunctivitis were mild or moderate and only one led to treatment discontinuation. Overall, the safety profile during the prolonged tralocinumab treatment up to 52 weeks was consistent with the initial treatment period. These are the first pivotal phase 3 trials demonstrating that by specifically targeting IL-13 alone, patients can achieve significant improvements in atopic dermatitis signs, symptoms and quality of life and the majority could maintain the response over 52 weeks without any topical corticosteroid use. After having achieved clear or almost clear skin with the every second week dosing regimen, dosing every fourth week may be appropriate in some patients. The overall frequency and severity of adverse events was comparable to placebo. 
These two trials provide evidence that trilocunumab offers a long-term, well-tolerated treatment option for patients with moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. These are my disclosures.